Hi, welcome back to UK House Radio. This is Lauren Rosenberg. I'm Fear Busters, talking about fear and phobia. And today we welcome Natalie, who is going to talk about her fear, and especially coming into spring and summer, uh, this particular fear that she's going to explain and tell us which one it is, um, how it's affecting her, and how maybe we can start changing and making some changes in order for her to um, regain her freedom. Natalie, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So yes, the fear, would you like to tell us, tell our um, listeners what, what fear it is? Yes, um, so I've got a fear, and when I say fear, I have a, a very phobia of um, wasps and bees. I'm also wasps, I think, because I just find them extra angry. Um, but <laughs> If anything kind of remotely, um, well, flies or buzzes, then that can kind of trigger trigger the fear off. Um, just, let me just stop you just a second. You said, um, when I said fear, you said more like a phobia. Um, do you know the difference? Or for, for our listeners, I'm just going to tell the difference of a fear is when something is disturbing you and stopping you doing things, but... A phobia is when you actually prevent and you even stop doing things before you actually see the problem or what you're scared of. And also, um, for example, I helped somebody who had um, a fear of insect, but uh, it became it was a phobia because every time a little black dot looked, she thought she was thought it was an insect, but it's not. So, just wanted to explain to our listeners that a fear is. A lower level in a, in the sense is still disturbing you is still taking some of your freedom back i mean away but a phobia is like an extreme it goes to the higher level of the fear in itself so it's interesting that you actually correct yourself and you actually acknowledged that level of of uh, the fear so how is that affecting you um well to be honest when it comes to this like the warmer months when they start coming out i I don't like going outside. If I do go outside, I'm constantly on my guard. And like, if anything buzzes past me, I'm constantly like, oh, oh, all the time. And my husband's always like, what's wrong with you? I was like, something buzz past me. And my children notice it as well, because they go to me like, you know, they'll say, oh, mommy, there's a wasp there, because they know that I'm scared of it. And I'm like, okay, thanks. Thanks for letting me know that kind of thing. Um, and a lot of the time, if there's a lot around, I'll just come back inside again. And I don't like, um, especially in the days where it's like, oh, you can meet in a pub, you know, the pub garden, the beer garden. That's like my worst nightmare because they're always there. And I, I remember a few times being out in pubs and things and I've kind of been wedged in at a table and I can't move. And there's one like just flying around the table, around the glasses. And I'm just there, it's like, I can't physically move because I'm kind of trapped in this little booth. And I'm like, they're just like, oh my God, like trying to pretend that it's not there and that it's fine. And, but a lot of the time I do have to kind of, get away and um <laughs> yes I no no they're not stung me yet I think that's because I'm just so quick I'm like a ninja they can't land so you know you said phobia does that also um happen if you don't see one or only you're only scared if you do see one if I hear any sort of buzzing so if I see if I hear a buzzing or if I see um so any oh, noise, can... any type of noise is similar to a bee or bubble bee or something. Yeah, yeah. or even like a shadow sometimes. You know, like sometimes you can see a shadow of something flying, like that can start yeah. <laughs> um, But also if I see it on the tea, like I know there was a few adverts, is it for the uh, Jack Daniels, the honey, when the bee comes on? Oh, okay. I can't, watch, can't watch that advert. <laughs> I'm always like, no. <laughs> and what's the, um, what's the worry behind that? I don't... I don't know if it's just the fear of the unknown because I've not been stung, but I've seen my mom get stuck. My mom got stung when I was little and um, it got stuck in her shoe. And I just remember at quite an early age associating like a wasp with my mom screaming like just for ages because it was stuck and it kept on stinging her. So What's the, that... what was her reaction? What do you remember from it? What was her reaction I, when it happened? I just remember the screaming. I remember the screaming and I remember because we were, I think we were on holiday, um, we were in the Caribbean at the time and obviously everything there is like 
bigger than it is in the UK. Um, so I just remember hearing screaming and then asking, like, my, my dad had to carry me um, back to the boat because I didn't want to walk because I'd associated that she'd, she'd trod on something. So I didn't even want to walk on the floor. So he had to carry me back. Um, and she was just screaming, screaming. And obviously it got stuck. So even when we were, like, after the initial, it was still, it got swollen. And so, yeah, it was, her reaction to it was, she was in a lot of pain. She didn't hide it. <laughs> but I don't think you can really when you're in that much pain. So, okay. So, um, and I was just thinking, because I, I um, well, I was an adult, but I saw, it happened to my daughter. Um, you know, she left her shoes near the swimming pool and uh, coming out put her feet in it and also got stunk so but obviously uh, I don't have the fear of bees uh, and she didn't have either so what I'm saying is there could have been an underlining already a fear somewhere for something else but you saw your mum's reaction and she screamed and and you saw her how much she was in pain so that may have may have been the trigger of that fear of bees you've never been stung in your life no, I actually, on that same holiday before that happened, I'd had, uh, I think it was like a, a big wasp had gone on my arm and I was sunbathing and I just kind of opened my eyes and just kind of went, like, just, just kind of blowed it away and just kind of wiggled it and it just flew off. Um, but then after that, like, yeah, now I don't know how to react. I remember um, when I was with my mom and we had one, I think we'd, She'd given it a whack, it was in the house, mm -hmm. and it had crawled up on my sock. And I remember my mom just kind of pretending that it wasn't there and just trying to get rid of it without me knowing. I was like, What are you doing? She's like, It's okay, just keep watching the TV. And I was like, Why, what's going on? And as soon as I saw it, I was just mm -hmm. like, Froze. I was just like, like, Get it off and get it off. Like, just so much fear. Was that and, before, um, before her? before going away? It was that or um, after? That, that's that since. So obviously, before I was just yeah. kind of like, You know go away I don't, don't like it particularly mm. um I think I remember having a bee stuck on my dress once when I was in first school and you know I just kind of let them they just they just whacked it off and I didn't have much problems but since seeing the consequence of what can happen I'm kind of like nope no. not getting on me <laughs> and, uh, hitting honey hitting honey or buying a jar with uh, a picture of a bee on it is that okay or not that, yeah, I don't seem to have a problem with that because they're usually um, quite abstract. It, it's usually when they look mm. realistic, if it looks real. Mm. Okay. So what's the, um, Natalie, what's the feeling? What's the, what's going on in your body when it happened? And I mean, are you okay to open windows? I know I worked, I actually worked on a few people who had fear of bees and it's, it was all different. Uh, but some of them, uh, one wouldn't open windows at all. One actually needed to get rid of her fear of bees because she wanted to get married outdoor. So we had to sort it out in the summer. Uh, and another one is a child who was scared of bees because it was stung. So, you know, everybody has their own little story. But what's the, where do you feel that feeling of scared of bees if there was one around you? Where, how does that start? Um, if, it, if I see one in the room, it, it becomes my 100% focus, mm -hmm. and especially if I can't get out of the room. Um, so I used to work in a school and obviously it was very, they're like, you know, we don't want kids to have that fear. It's your fear. You've got to keep a hold of it. So if it would be in the room and I knew it was there, I would just kind of be very aware of it and I couldn't concentrate on anything else. Yeah. It would just be, yeah. And I'd be so, trying to get away from it as much as I can, but kind of like making sure I knew exactly where it was. Mm -hmm. So if, you know, there was one near you. Where would you feel that in your body? Where, what was, what would, what, what was going on? What would happen into your mind and your body? What's that? Where do you um, feel that first? How do you know that this is? If how do you know this is danger? How do you know? I know subconsciously, obviously, you've had, you've seen your memory action. So ideally, you know, if we were doing a session, we would go into the the memory, we would clear the memory or change the memory and, and or even delete it with maybe eye movement therapy and then you wouldn't have it anymore. But since we're on air, we're talking about it, we can't really do that. And it's not, it's not uh, you know, a full session. Uh, but I'd like to know, where do you feel that in your body? Where do you get that message saying, okay, there's a bee in the room, I've got to be extra careful and, you know, this feeling of feeling stuck. 
where do you feel that in your body um I instantly my face gets very flushed like when all the kind mm. of blood rushes to your face and okay. I, I get very like clammy very hot and clammy okay. and um sometimes a little bit sick a bit of a like a sickly feeling especially if I know that I can't um get out and I definitely have that fight um that flight kind of built in mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm like I'm ready to I'm ready to move I mean I'm not I'm not always say the, the fastest person in the world but when it comes to if there's a wasp coming near me oh my gosh I can move like a ninja <laughs> I really can <laughs> yeah that's definitely the fear makes you you know yeah. do things uh, I mean that that's the the good thing and the and the and not the good thing about it because you know when we have the fear we've got our subconscious mind kicking in and there's no logic so we will do anything to get out of of that specific thing that is scaring us uh i've uh, i've helped a lady who was scared of um of dogs and uh, she was you know walking around was pushing the pram with the baby in uh, in the pram and she just left the baby in the middle of in the pram, the pram in the middle of the road because she saw a dog uh, that is not the ideal things to do. And uh, so, I mean, luckily now she no longer have the fear, but that is what fear, you know, push you to do. You just want mm. to get out of the way as, and it, we don't care if there's any, if you put yourself even in danger. So yeah. if, could we try something? Would you be willing to try something and see if we can just yeah. dislodge and make it a little bit less scary? So if there was a, is bee or wasp or they all the same or some of them are worse or um, i'd probably say wasp more i don't particularly like bees but i know that mm -hmm. they are less likely to be aggressive than wasps whereas i know that wasps like my friend she just got randomly stung and they're they're, they're usually the ones that just don't care so mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. stay out of their way <laughs> it actually happened to me once when i was little so that's what i'm saying there could then probably was was underlining other fear in order to to, for the fear to, to, to start because um, I, I know that when I was little I just sat down on the bench and I felt something like a little bit rough and I thought it was just I didn't really think twice and then I just literally picked and then suddenly realized and I just held on and basically I got stung in the back and in my finger but I didn't realize but what I'm saying is I still didn't have a fear yeah. talking about it just now your body went into something what was that feeling it just makes it just makes my my spine go all funny. <laughs> just okay. Can you still feel it right now? Um, no, I think it was just when you took when you spoke about. I mean, it's still underlying, but not as okay. bad. So <laughs> would it be okay for you to imagine that there was a bee or a wasp near you, and then just to tune a little bit? Don't tune too much, but just so we can try to see if we can actually reduce that feeling inside your body. Okay. So. Um, if there was something, okay, be or what, near, where where would you feel something inside? Um, I think, first of all, it would be kind of that rising. So I'd feel my, my face would start flushing. Mm -hmm. I'd be fidgeting. I fidget quite a lot. My hands, I mean, even okay. just doing an interview, they're very clammy. I'm just a very nervous, clammy person. Okay. So <laughs> more. what colour would you need to release this? agitating feeling and and clammy feeling and what what color if you had to pick a color that would actually get rid of that feeling what color would it be i say blue because it's that calming yeah okay so would you like to um if that's okay with you just to relax close your eyes take a deep breath through your nose and out of your mouth and then imagine this nice light blue going in into your mind down your throat like a nice light blue river going in flooding in right down into your stomach into your legs allow this nice light blue going down your spine and also down your shoulder relaxing your muscle relaxing those little cells and allow the nice light blue going into your hand clearing that energy that's block making that feeling lighter and lighter and lighter so light and so soft that it'll just flow and it'll just go to your hand, to your, to your face, to your feet. It may come out making you yawn. Just notice that nice feeling and see that nice blue going in and out your body, taking all that heaviness away. 
when we're scared of something, the energy gets blocked in the body and it creates some heaviness because it creates some blockage. So what we're doing is just letting that nice blue color going in, lifting and undoing all those blockages. Imagine like this nice little blue river, like this nice water going in, lifting, making it lighter and lighter and lighter. So Natalie, now that we've done this, I experienced a little bit of color therapy and emo trance. Um, just if there was a bee or wasp near you now, what does that feel like in your body now? I think it would initial start to flush. But I think I could maybe, if I can go to that safe space, maybe like almost almost like simmer it down because it does kind of come from the bottom up. And okay. then so maybe almost like putting a stop of like, no, and kind of grounding, maybe like grounding myself a little bit. Okay. So, um, and now if you, if okay, tune back in and imagine that there is um, a wasp in a room, okay? Just notice what you feel in your body and tell me if it's still the same color, if it's a different color, whatever color it is, and then we're going to send it again. So if there was one in a room and or near the window or, you know, don't, don't make it too too hard to that but just just notice what I feel like in your body and then just let me know and then we're going to shift it a little bit more yeah I think the color that would stop it would again it would be uh, that kind of blue I think it's because I I associate that fear with kind of like getting hot and flushed so kind of like cool like anything mm -hmm. that's a cooling color to mm -hmm. kind of okay. bring it down mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So see this nice blue color going in again, just close your eyes, make yourself comfortable, remind yourself that you're safe and see this nice blue color going all the way down your spine, giving you more support, more safety. See that color going into your shoulders, into your arms, out of your hand, taking all the heaviness out of your hand, making that feeling nice and light and soft and allowing it, everything to flow nicely. See that nice blue going into your legs, out of your feet, and all around you, making you feel safe. And notice what I feel like that feeling, and then whenever you're ready, you can just take a deep breath and open your eyes. You okay? Mm hmm So what's it feeling like now inside your body? What's that feel like? Just a bit more calm, just kind of going into that um, that happy place type thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Hit the therapy before, and it was you know oh, that yeah, kind of going to that happy your happy place. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yes, I do also um, hypnotherapy, and uh, and it's interesting how you can even do hypnotherapy online, and you see people really that's relaxing, fun. and yeah. Um, what would you have to say to your younger self? If you had to speak to younger self at that specific time when your mum got stung, what would you have to say? What would you say to that younger self? I would just say, you know, don't panic. It's, you know, it's just a thing. It's part of, you know, it's just, it's a part of life. Sometimes you get hurt. Sometimes these things happen, but it's only a fleeting feeling. So don't, don't, worry about you know I think it's about putting it into perspective because mm -hmm. I've, I've always had a fear of needles and things I tell my younger self when you're 18 or oh, okay, I don't know I was 21 you're going to get a tattoo so you're going to get over that fear of needles <laughs> you'll be fine so um so you do have fear of needles yeah I did I, I actually that's why I got tattoos done because it was something that I always wanted to get done mm -hmm. and um because of my fear I didn't get it done and I thought no I'm gonna I'm gonna overcome it um so, unfortunately I have a very strange pain threshold so every time I do get them done I do almost faint but <laughs> well you know the fear of bees and uh, wasp and fear of needles um probably very much connected with you because it's in it is we know bees and wasp, they, you know, it's injecting is like a, they have the same similar sharp feeling in, in that sense. So, so it's definitely connected, but it's very much like something strange. The wizard bee and the wasp is slightly different. It's something strange entering your body or so. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. the needles or so entering yeah. your body. So they are very much connected. But um, 
would you like to try like you could close your eyes and see your younger self and talk to your younger self and see what, what happens should we try yeah. to do that so if you were I was going to say because um, I did um, as a child. I had quite bad severe allergies to um, like mosquito bites and things. And I suppose that same thing of again being injected. I used to come out and really used to get very swollen and <laughs> get bitten a lot. So, yeah, so that's what we're saying. It's not, you know, it's not just because of that specific that event that happened. There must have been an underlining um, worry about something else, and that specific event just literally make made it worse and yeah and I do think it. that if I did get stung that I'd be that typically unlucky person that would be allergic to it because I tend to get quite severe allergies to everything <laughs> so yeah only when you get stung or other allergies we're talking about um I well I've, I've got um I've got allergies to like um latex and things like so um you know your elastic goes in your pants and things like that if that touches my skin it comes out in welts um clusters um even like jewelry which is why I ended up making my own jewelry because I couldn't wear any of my jewelry I started um getting very like swollen pain and stuff and so yeah quite a lot of uh, skin, so, skin things um, yeah if we were working together I would look into um skin reactions and the underlining fear of bees could be more worried about the reaction of your body than the actual bees in itself sometimes we are we think we're scared of something and sometimes it's completely something different it's more what's behind what's going on there so um yes the western bees are more likely to stung you than something else but um definitely your body has tendency of wanting to protect you and when do you get allergies and when you get swollen skin and reaction to things it's the body is so clever and the body just wants to protect you, but the body doesn't have a conscious logic mind. Okay. It's like, okay, well, this is happening. Therefore I need to produce something to fight it. And the something will be the swelling and the reaction. And, you know, it's like when we're in our well, we have temperature and that's because the body has his self-regulated and knows what to do when something is entering your body and has to fight it. But obviously that's not what we want. We don't want this rush. We don't want this reaction on the skin. Um, but this, this, um, usually that is put you on quite a high alert. or It would put a person on high alert. So your energy system would be vibrating quite a lot inside and and it will be quite hard to feel calm. It will be like a, like a ringing sound, a ringing bell all the time uh, that people may not see it, but inside this is how you would feel in, in your body so it's very important to do meditation or to do some breathing exercise or pressure points so you know like you, you've done a little bit of hypno but that would be um ideal things for you to do in order for your body to not be on high alert so that the skin doesn't have to be a skin reaction is you know our skin is, is there to protect us so when there's a skin reaction is also we don't trust the outside world so there's um there's a lot of sometimes subconscious belief that we create and then our body reacts to it too so um so that would explain why the event that happened to your mom you then went on to a fear of bees and then fears of wasps so there was an underlining already you knew what it feels like to have this reaction of skin reaction when something entered the skin yeah. That's the thing I had when I was 17 I had my um pneumonia jab and I got cellulitis from that and I was hospitalized so I also have that kind of thing of when things go into my body things it doesn't end well yeah so, 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 is, yeah. so usually when we have something like this gradually what happens is we create um a stronger belief it's like well look this happened this has happened this happened and that happened therefore I know now that when things goes into my body, it doesn't end up well. So, but it doesn't quite work out this way subconsciously. Subconsciously usually is we create a belief and we reinforce it because we have that belief. So if you started thinking, saying, okay, even if things goes into my skin, my body, I trust my body, my body would know how to react and how to deal with it. And if you kept on using that affirmation and kept on going and, and keep telling your subconscious mind this gradually 
there will be less reaction or, you know, obviously there will be needed to, to, to work on it and everything. But um, is that's the way it works, not the other way where people think, OK, well, I'm right because, look, this and that and that happened and this happened, this and that and that. And therefore, I can't have anything going into my skin because something is, there's going to be a reaction. So that's reinforcing a wrong belief that we have in the first time. But because we have it, we keep attracting that. And then it makes sense because that's the program that will be in your in your subconscious mind. And the minute something will enter your skin, your subconscious mind has that program. No, uh, high alert! I know I need to react, and I know I need to make a reaction out of this in order to to get it out of your body, in a sense. So, so mm -hmm. that's how you become sensitive to it, and. And this is how your body, so it's actually not your body going against you, but your body is actually so clever that it wants to protect you. So even the latex or anything that is too sensitive, your body has been programmed at the moment to keep you safe and to be on high alert if something like this enter your skin and therefore is overreacting. But on the conscious mind and logic, that's not what we want because we don't want those symptoms and we don't want that skin to start, you know, swelling and things. So it would be interesting if you start telling your mind, actually, you know what? Yes, I understand it happened, but maybe next time or, or even if it doesn't happen, maybe my skin doesn't have to be so sensitive. Maybe it was just a wrong belief and maybe I can cancel that, you know, just obviously there'll be a bit more deeper work to be done, but it will be just, as you start thinking differently, your body and your mind would then, okay, well, if that's the case, then I may not need to react so much about it. Uh, or if you did have to have an injection, or uh, I don't know about the vaccination, but if you didn't have to have something, then you would prepare your body and say, I know that what happened before is, is like this, but now I can prepare my body and I can tell my mind that even if I did have an injection, my body doesn't have to react like this. And so you would, you know, keep using affirmations. You could do some pressure points. You could do some, um, you know, color therapy. There will be lots of different things to, sh to shift that. But this would get you to have your body not be on high alert and reacting like this. When we're on high alert, our body knows that it has to do something because it wants to be kind to us and and then there will be this reaction in that sense so so like you said that sentence is really important you said i know my body when something enters my body i have a reaction so that is a belief that subconsciously you created so if you were actually transforming that and starting reminding every single day your mind actually even if something enter my body i can still be okay my body doesn't have to react like this. I'll still be okay. I'll still be safe. I'll still be okay. Then that will actually gradually change. And in fact, you said you've done some tattoos and you know you were okay. You, there was no reaction or it was... Um, I, I didn't have it. Well, I get a slight reaction every now and again, um, but more so, I just, like I said, I get, I, uh, I get a little bit, I'm, I'm a fainter. So that's what <laughs> I've discovered when I've had them done, that even if I'm feeling like, I'm okay. I can do this. Mm -hmm. As soon as I'm on that chair, like I start, I go a bit green, and they go, "Oh, get get yeah, that's green. normal. That that would be normal because you know when somebody says I'm okay, they're using the conscious mind, and the conscious mind can say whatever they want. But if the program subconsciously is, as soon as something enters my skin, I'm in high alert and high danger, and I need to switch off then that is the program that's going to kick in the minute somebody's going to want to do some work on you. You're going mm -hmm. to, to have that, okay, I need to switch off. And switching off for the body is either fainting, it's fainting basically. So so that makes sense in that sense. So it would, you know, next time you, if you wanted to enjoy that process, you would work on, sub, on the sub, in the subconscious mind and then it would be different that that would be a different different way of doing it so um but um how does that feel now thinking and um, putting things together because it's also understanding and putting pieces of puzzles together understanding who you are and why is your body reacting like this so if there was a bee or wasp near you what would that feel like now compared to when we started i guess i just have to think if I leave it alone, it will leave me alone. If it comes near me, what's the worst that can happen? 
I suppose most people get stung and they don't even realise that it's there. Mm -hmm. So just knowing that it's there shouldn't bother me because, like I say, it's, it's that's not usually when you get stung anyway. They don't just go, oh, well, they look no, nice. They don't really want to stung you because otherwise they'll die. So they don't want to to start yet. But um, it's interesting hearing you now. I don't know if you were aware, the way you were more relaxed at to talking about it than when we started. I don't know if you noticed that. And it's like, then you say, oh, maybe, well, you know, there may not be singing like before. It's like, no, 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 there's like definitely. So what, okay, so what would that feel like? What does that feel like in your body now? Talking about it, mentioning it, thinking about it. Does that feel mm -hmm. lighter? Does that feel different? Does that feel? I mean, I still, I still think I'd avoid Oh, actively course. like looking at them and stuff <laughs> but um I don't know maybe, maybe I'll crack open a window every now and again in the summer <laughs> to not be so scared that they'll come in because <laughs> last summer um I was working I, I was working it's like a, a lean-to and it's it's basically a conservatory roof and um with the sun on it it was getting really really hot and despite that fact when my husband wasn't working from home and I was I had to have all the doors and windows closed because I couldn't risk one getting in and then I couldn't be in that room. So mm -hmm. I was in that room literally baking. I know. <laughs> so I think now I just kind of be like, you know what? I can open a window. If it comes, if, it, if one comes in, I'll just come out of its way. I think it's just because they look so angry. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I'm trying not to think about their angry little faces. <laughs> um, if you wanted, we could just go, you know, just quickly just going into... You could close your eyes. See you, you if you can see your younger self at that age when it happened to mum, and then just talk to you. Literally, just talk to your younger self, and then just see how, if you want. We could do that if you wanted to. Yeah, um, would I talk to myself in my head or out loud? We could or? do. We could do it loud. You could do like you could just like like just take a deep breath, close your eyes, and um, and then you imagine that little three year old take anything that's dangerous out. Okay, just freeze it or put a curtain around it or don't hear mum. Just just let just talk just literally talking to the little three year old and just um tell the three year old that you know just be ensure that you're safe. That even as you grow up, you're safe. That it's okay. That just just you can you know what what would you want to say to her there and then? I think I'd say that it would be it you know it's okay and that you know. Even by the time you're 31, you've actually never been stung by one. So <laughs> it's not really anything to worry about because if in 31 years it's never happened, then what, you know, what you worry about? Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> excellent. And can you see her in that picture? Can you see her where she looks? I mean, is she smiling or responding or just what that look like in that picture? I think she's just kind of like looking at me like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. My younger self is never very easily convinced. A bit like my older self sometimes. <laughs> she sometimes she has to learn the hard way. I've noticed. <laughs> that's another. That's another belief that can be. You know, if you believe that learn the hard way, then you're going to have the hard way. So I would advise you to say, I'm open to ease in my life. I'm open to receive ease in my life. And every single time I open a door. I welcome ease in my life. Try that for a week. Every time you have to open a door, even in your in your house, wherever you are, every time you open a door, you open the door to ease in your life and then see what happens. So mm -hmm. have a go at that. And then maybe your belief will change and maybe you'll see that things will happen easily. Uh, Natalie, you mentioned work. You mentioned uh, something that you do. So do you want to share with our listeners what you do? Yeah, um, so I run my own little small business, uh, which I started after having my little girl, because um, I suffered with postnatal depression with her. Um, so it's kind of, I noticed that I'd stopped doing things for me. It was just, I had one role type thing, as you, as you do when you become a mom, mm -hmm. it becomes all consuming. Um, and I decided that I was going to actually actively give myself something that was my time that I could say, no, this is this is for me. So I started my little business, Athena's Bounty. Um, mainly started doing it with um because I write poetry. Um, so I was using my poetry and creating cards, creating prints, 
In fact, I've got, here's one I made earlier. <laughs> but I'd get like my artwork and I'd, um, I'd put my poems to the artwork and prints. And where, where can we find those prints? What, um... Um, so I've got a website, it's, um, it's athenasbounty.co.uk. Um, but I'm also on um, Facebook and Instagram as well, um, at Athena's Bounty UK. Um, and how does those print come? Are they laminated or like in a book or, or are they made for people or, or do, do, do you customise them or how does that work? Um, so I, these ones I did, these were back when I could actually do craft fairs. So I had those, they were kind of ready yeah. to go craft fairs. And there was a time where we could do fairs. Um, Oh, the good old days. Um, but yeah, so um, I do offer like customized prints. So um, actually, there's one that I am. Um, there was one that I did for. I think it was for um, for someone's birthday. So they kind of said that they liked the design um, of the stack. You created a design too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, I painted the design. So that's uh, through my watercolors. Um, and then she said she wanted it as a birthday poem for a friend. So I wrote her a bespoke poem for her friends so it talks about like the things that she likes so she likes coronation chicken and potato salad um and that kind of thing so they're really really personalized um and name things but obviously if there's a poem that people like um that's a generic poem i can still write you know names and things to personalize is that something that you've always had the passion about poetry that i've i've loved poetry since i was nine i i got gifted a do you remember the the flower fairies um Mm -hmm. book Yeah, I got gifted yeah. when I was nine and I just fell in love with it and I had my own little poetry book and I'd I'd write little poems in there and I'd write um, poems that I'd heard that I loved and I'd write them and, and credit who had written it and I'd have this little folder of poems and as I got older I think it became a bit of a what's the word like a therapy technique so yeah I was, was going to think actually uh, I yeah. was thinking if you could write one on on the be- on bees yeah uh, that would be That's quite a uh, good idea but yeah, yeah it's like it's my like outpouring of emotion so usually yeah, when I'm these thinking, are you know like I mean they have got freedom of flying anywhere they want and they're making honey and sweetness and there's quite a lot of good thing out of, of a bee yeah. so it would be quite nice to to use your talent into and then and make make me a yeah do poetry yeah. On, on it and see if they if if the way you see them changes in certain yeah. ways. I think that's the thing. I think with bees, it's, it wasn't as much. I think Bee Movie, the Bee Movie helped that because I do like Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah. <laughs> and <that's- laughs> in a very nice and way. And I the wasp were like bigger and, and uh, but it would be quite interesting to, to, um, to do, yeah, if you, if you could do it yeah. go and, and, and use, because that's your talent and to, to express yourself and just to let, let it um, flow. Let's just, let's just the writing flow. So, yeah, re- so rewrite, rewrite the story a little bit and kind of make them the good guy and not so, <laughs> not, not something to be feared. <laughs> um, so, um, just, so if people want to um, have you to uh, personalise poetry, where do they find you? On a website, you said, on Facebook? and um, Yeah, um, usually for personalisations, it's probably um, easier to find me on Facebook um, just because it's easier to get those personalisations across. So that's, um, it's at um, Athena's Bounty UK on Facebook. Okay. Um, yeah. And how, long, how long does it take to, to write a poet? To be honest, it, it doesn't take me too long. As, as long as I've got the details from the person, because usually, um, like, for, for, for this one, for instance, it was a case of getting all the details. So I, I do ask quite a lot of questions just to make sure that I've got all the background information that I can um, to then build up a, a poem and a, and a picture of the person. Because um, I know that I did one last year for a friend who her grandmother had passed away. She wanted a commemorative um, poem written for her gra- about her grandmother and I obviously we were friends but I'd never met her grandmother and it was so, getting a lot of details to kind of about what kind of woman she was what kind of uh, grandmother and mother those kind of things right. and then I put it together and she said oh my gosh it's like you knew her but you didn't and I was like well that's very nice thought, so do you have yeah, sample can we can people see samples on your website or just to get an idea or, or? Um, yeah I mean I've got um some examples on there at the moment um so I've got the, this is a little um, postcard poem that I've done. Okay. Oh, so you can have a postcard. Okay, excellent. So if um, to our listeners, if they want to know more, they can just check out your website yeah. or 
see you I mean, on I, can read, um, I can read this one if you if you like yeah you can just, just yeah, yeah if you want to read one yeah excellent yeah, so um this is one that I call it's called mother butterfly so obviously in time for mother's day um you nurtured me and gave me hope you taught me ways I could learn to cope every lesson you taught every bruised knee kissed allow me to have courage and to persist to allow me to spread my wings and fly high you will always be my guiding butterfly good it's very nice <laughs> I like butterflies. I really like butterflies too. That's, that's very nice for Mother Day. So thank you very much. Uh, Natalie, thank you so much for coming on today and talking about your fear and also sharing your beautiful um, poem. And and I um, wish you um, all the best in this enterprise. And if you want to work more on the fear, then you can always get back to me and we can work deeper. But in the meantime, just um, yeah, try to write a poem on uh, on bees and uh, and just use a little bit of that colour and then see if it, if it helps. Uh, that's um, Lauren Rosenberg at Fear Buster and looking forward to next week talking about another fear. <laughs>